going on, everybody? It's Coach Reg, a.k.a. Mr. Intensity, and my job is to invoke thought and help awaken the world's consciousness one person at a time. Hopefully, that person is you. Now, this video was about a lot of things about me. The reason why you're still eating me. Now, I'm not one of these people out here that's going to bash you for still eating me, but I'm going to give you all the knowledge that you need to make you conscious on why many like me have stopped eating this food. Um, first things first, it's not supposed to be our food anyway. But when it comes down to it, I'm not going to get into the scientific facts too much. I'll get into a comparison and contrast of the excuses that I used to make in my life back when I used to eat meat and how good I feel after eating meat. Now, there's many things you can say about this and, you know, I don't like to stop eating meat. I don't think I'm getting my protein. We're going to address these issues. These are my top five with a bonus issue in this video. Before we get started, please visit my website, intensityfitnessunited.com. Check out any uh, sales we got going on, any coupons we have going on. All that stuff is in there. Please visit it. Leave a review if you have enjoyed any products. We have two new soaps that just launched, the Bergamot and the Lucis Soap. They're amazing. We have the essential oils. We have the deodorant. We have the programs. The programs are still on sale. Check them out now. Now, yesterday we did a video about couples and uh, changing nutrition. And this has a lot to do with nutrition because these excuses you keep on telling yourself. And I'm going to debunk most of these excuses. Now, after this video, you're going to be conscious. So now after you're learning about a little bit about what is going on with the meat, now you understand there's no ignorance is bliss. You're not ignorant now. You actually know the facts or what's really can change in your life. So let's get into my top five reasons why you're still, still eating meat. First reason, because you like meat. You like the way it tastes. You like the way it smells. You like the way the texture feels when you're chewing it. You just like it. It just tastes so good. And I understand what you're feeling. I like fried chicken. I like baked chicken. I like all kinds of chicken. All right. I did. But let me tell you right now. There's better things out there. They're ruling your mind with the seasoning. They're ruling your taste buds with triggering sensors in your mind, all right, with the seasonings. You can also create the same feeling and sensation, not the trick, through actual vegetarian, vegan lifestyle as well. It's all about the seasonings, right? So when you go to Popeye's, when you smell it, when you taste it, and you smell so good, taste so good, they're seasoning a certain way because I have eaten bland ass chicken before that doesn't taste good and I'll probably never eat it again back when I ate it. And there's a comparison with good eating chicken. So it's all about the seasoning. So if you learn how to do the seasonings the right way with a vegan lifestyle, would you change? Would you change? Number two. Now, because you couldn't think of cooking without meat on your dish. Now there's tons of dishes that have mostly meat on there. I grew up with damn near all of them. You got your steak, you got your chicken, you got your pork, bacon, whatever, you know, the pork, bacon, sausage, um, you got your fish. You got all kinds of dishes that always include, even if you look at the periodic chart of how, not the ch chart, but the um, whatever, the, the diet chart that always says you have a meat, you have a carb, you have a dairy, and you have a veggie, right? Now, if you look at that, Half of that plate, you actually shouldn't be eating. So from the start, we already know that it's bullshit because the dairy has recombinant bovine growth hormone. We're the only freaking species that eats and drinks another species' milk. We're dumb enough to do that. Uh, so we have hemp seed, almond milk. I mean, hemp seed milk, almond milk, flax milk, coconut, uh, coconut milk, cashew milk. Okay, cool. And then you have your meat. Your meat you shouldn't be eating, and we're getting to that right now, but... Those, so 50% of that plate is BS. Next, number three. Now, this is one of the biggest ones that I've heard of. You think that you cannot get protein without meat. You'll lose a bunch of weight. You'll lose your gains. You can't gain. And you'll lose your energy without protein. Well, first thing on losing energy without protein, if you eat protein all day, you'll still be hungry. First things first. If you eat chicken all day, you'll still probably be hungry. Unless it has a bunch of hormones in it because the chicken has hormones, which we'll address in this video. But let's kind of uh, compare and contrast my favorite protein compared to my old favorite protein. Now, my new favorite protein is beans. My old favorite protein is chicken, right? So let's look at chicken per 100 grams of serving and see what's in per 100 grams of serving of chicken. And let's compare it to black beans. First things first, per 100 grams of chicken, I'm sorry, chicken breast, you have 3.6 grams of total fat. 
85 milligrams of cholesterol, 74 milligrams of sodium, zero carbs, and 31 grams of protein. All right. Now for black beans per cup, all right, we have 624 calories. You have 1.7 grams of fat. You have zero grams of cholesterol. You have 17 grams of sodium, and you have 116 grams of carbs, and you have 39 grams of protein. So this is telling me that the beans are might be a little healthier. They're also carbs. You're actually getting carbs and proteins in the same dish, so you're not mixing it up, and you're not filling yourself up with two different things. You actually can kill two birds with one stone. They're also low in fat low in cholesterol, and low in sodium, which means that your risk of getting high blood pressure, high cholesterol, is actually getting lower with eating more lively things such as seeds, nuts, beans, and vegetables. Think about it like that. And if you're looking at these slides that I'm putting up, you'll see how you have tons of options out there for you. You just got to be open-minded to see and go find these options because you can learn how to cook if you actually got a recipe like my wise recipe book. It can actually... The, her first one that she came out with actually teaches somebody how to be a meat eater into a vegan eater by showing them, you know, the recipes they're already comfortable with, a couple of them, and then they're showing pescatarian recipes, and then they're showing them vegetarian recipes, and then she's showing them vegan recipes also in desserts as well. So you can go ahead and check that book out on Intensity Fitness United, IntensityFitnessUnited.com so she can help you out with that as well. Also, subscribe to her channel which has everything that we've talked about, and she's making new ones every single week. So I don't want to hear any excuses. It's all about whether you actually want to do it because when it comes down to it, this stuff is horrible for you. This stuff can kill you. It's actually worse than sugar and all that stuff because of all the subclinical antibiotics in it, all the drugs they put in it, not to mention the life from the actual animal which was tortured and murdered and that is actually being put into your body as well. And if you, can, if you have an issue with your body, you can't actually get more life out of death. It's not going to work that way. Uh, you can't have a positive and a negative co coexist in the same area because meat is 100% acidic and dead. When you put live in your food, you have live enzymes in your body, which actually liven up your body with different enzymes. So let's just give that a thought right there. All right, let's get into the next one. Now, you don't think that you'll be able to go anywhere or hang around your family and friends because of meat being present at every single function, whether it's church, whether it's, um, it's movies, whether it's diner, whether it's dinner, whether it's holidays, it's present at every area. And I get it. It's very difficult. But sometimes to be the one who actually saves the lives, you got to be in the minority for a little bit so the majority can actually hear what you're saying and understand how serious you are about it. Because for a while when I became vegan, it was very hard to go around my family. So I didn't do it at first until they understood why I wasn't coming around and they started to accommodate for somebody who eats like me, understand that they, even though they haven't changed it, they understand that I've changed it. And it, through my results, some of them have changed their lives through my results by being a constant force in what I believe in, understanding this is the right way. Because last time I checked, the majority of people aren't following the right thing. My belief, if, if it's in the majority, it ain't good. So I don't want to be a sheeple. I want to be one that actually is conscious and knows the truth and stands by my truth whether you accept me or not, all right? So when you uh, adapt this lifestyle, it may be too hard, which is why you're staying in that lifestyle, but I want you to think about the long-term effects of staying in that lifestyle, all right? Now, you think it's expensive to be a vegan. Cool, that's a lie, all right? I thought it was expensive. Every belief that you think you know unless you research it, is bullshit. You must research everything that you think you know so you can actually know it instead of listening to somebody else and say, oh, it's too expensive. They'll always be at Whole Foods. That's a lie. You won't always be at Whole Foods, but you need to understand how to cook because if you're not, if you don't understand how to cook, you might always be at Whole Foods because it's already pre-made for you. If you understand how to make your food, how to prepare your food and what goes into your food, you'll be at the produce, which is a lot cheaper than Whole Foods. Just letting you know. But let's look into some research that I found that they actually did on eating plant over eating meat. Now, the evidence has shown that adhering to so-called healthy diet costs a dollar fifty more per day compared to an unhealthy diet. Now, a recent study published in the Journal of Hunger and Environmental Nutrition has found that people who adopt a vegetarian diet save an average of $750 each year on groceries compared to people who actually eat meat. Now, the USDA My Plant 7-Day Plan ended up costing 
$53.11 each week, while a plant-based olive meal plan came to $38.75. Now, the vegetarian meal plan also offered around 25 more servings of vegetables, 8 more servings of fruit, and 14 more servings of whole grains. Now, by shopping economically, people adhering to a vegetarian diet can save $746.46 a year compared to meat eaters. So, if you actually understand how to know what you're eating and shopping more economically, it does not cost you more. It also costs you less. Going out, eating meat, buying a pack of chicken over a, a whole thing of, of, of um, veggies and mushrooms and whatever I'm eating was a whole lot cheaper on this side when I was actually purchasing the meat over the, the vegetarian stuff. And, then, and after doing it for a period of time, I realized how much money I'm saving by eating more healthy. If you're going out all the time, that's something different. I'm talking about actually preparing on your own. And there are vegan spots out there that you can actually do because they understand that these people who want to kill you are playing both sides of the fence. So over here, they're killing you. Over here, they're saving you. It's the world we live in, all right? If you understand how to take care of yourself, you just understand where to go get your food from and understand how to you know, feel, feed your body, all right? Let's go into the bonus one. The bonus one is because the eating meat is actually attributing to your imminent death. I know for a fact that, you know, uh, if I'm not murdered or die in a car accident or something like that, and we're just talking living standards, I'll outlive you. And the quality of my life to for a meat eater is going to be a lot different because meat actually gave me high blood pressure before 30, high cholesterol, well, high, high cholesterol before 30, pre-diabetic before 30, and I was dealing with erectile dysfunction. When I got off of meat within one year's time, all that totally reversed, um, and I never felt better. I'll be 35 on Saturday, uh, and I never felt better. I thought that the way I was eating was right because it's what I was taught, and I accepted it, and I didn't want to change. And the more you're indoctrinated with something, the harder it's going to be for you to actually change what you learned because it's what's already programmed in you. And when you actually have to remove your hard drive, put a new hard drive in and download new information in that hard drive, because your brain is made off, your computer's the idea from computers made from your actual brain. So when you're removing a hard drive of a habit, it's difficult because you're gonna find resistance within yourself of what you already know. And to learn new things as an adult, being that we have busy lives already, is sometimes tough. But if it's gonna save your overall life and your overall quality of life and the way you function in life, I'm sure a lot of you want to look into that. But let's get into some of the things that meat actually does so you can understand what you're getting yourself into if you decide to stay in the meat life, okay? Now, and increase your risk of heart disease and diabetes. If you watch What the Health, you understand that that's true. Eating meat makes it harder to maintain a healthy body weight. Meat carries the highest risk of foodborne illnesses. It might contribute to rest erectile dysfunction. And they might. It will. And it also will make you sterile because they put things in to make you sterile. They put estrogen in your meat. They actually give you more estrogen. So it's going to kill a male's testosterone and give a female more estrogen, which is going to make her more manly and make a man more womanly. You see the effects in our society today anyway. Um, now, it can make you actually resistant to antibiotics and things that are natural because when you have death in your body and you put life in it, and you put more death in it, the death is going to be dominant in your life than the life. So if you eat veggies with the meat, it doesn't matter because it's more dominant and it's 100% acidic. So it's also going to make you smell weird down there if you're a female. We talked about this in a previous video tomorrow, yesterday. So if you actually haven't watched that video, you might watch that video too. And also increase your risk in death. And it's the vibration that it brings and the frequency it brings because of its life is not something that you want. Because when it comes down to it, when the meat is actually in those farms, they're sick, they're full of drugs to keep them alive, and then they've probably been dead for three weeks before they even get to you, and they put a false expiration date on it. So you can make decisions on your own, but I don't come here judging you. I come here understanding where you stand. I come here understanding your views. I come here understanding that uh, I must give you information because once I was given the information, I changed everything because I understood what was going on in the food. And yes, they're trying to kill us. I'm not going to be complaining about that. This is the world we live in. And being that we're living in this world, we got to play full court press. If you don't want to play full court press and get smashed every single time, that's on you. But I'm not getting dunked on by nobody, all right? And if I can have the tools to go ahead and take care of myself, then, hey, that's the tools I'm going to use. So besides that, this is my job to invoke your thought. So hopefully in this video, I've made you think. 
But if not, I'm going to keep on dropping them anyway because one of these videos is going to catch you. But I can only focus on one person at a time. So besides that, my name is Coach Reg, a.k.a. Mr. Intensity. And my job is to invoke thought and help work in the world's consciousness one person at a time. Hopefully that person is...